As Groundhog Day has passed and Valentine's Day approaches, love and spring are in the air. There's a lot to appreciate and love in the Warwick Valley, from horses to expressive art. Don't go away. We'll be exploring these topics and more on this month's edition of In the Valley. Welcome to this edition of In the Valley. I'm Stephanie Keegan. When someone hears the phrase voices through a photo, they might be confused. How can you hear an image? One project in Warwick, however, wants to give a different kind of voice to paintings. Let's have a look. Technology improving at an exponential rate and all the distractions, anxiety, or sadness it causes. Here in Warwick, a group is trying to combat the problems with technology but also bring the community closer together. Uh, we the People Warwick started in 2021 uh, with a di facilitated dialogue circles, um, and that's continued to be the core of our programming, but we have expanded into storytelling and the latest uh, photo voice. At the Albert Wisner Library, downstairs in the community room, we the people of Warwick have made a display of their Voices Through Photos exhibit. For the exhibit, we the people gave their members a prompt and asked them to take a picture that best answers the prompt. But what is we the people's goal with this exposition? Uh, one of the things that we were trying to achieve using photographs through and to interweave with our dialogue is how could people give vision to what they valued about our community? And even though we come from different points of view, different experiences, different cultural backgrounds, what are the sameness in our, the values that we hold here in Warwick? What is it that captures our imagination about this place that we so love? Bringing in photos every week to prompt their discussions and their dialogue and to express what they were thinking about the topic. Um, and it really inspired a lot of digging in between members of the group um, and a lot of bonding, actually. Bringing together the community in a world full of political and cultural tension, that is the reason Beverly founded this group, which started only three years ago, and their efforts have not gone unnoticed. When people are face-to-face -face talking, it's a very different exchange than when they're through social media or through writings or emails and the lines of communication are often much more personal and um, tend to help you connect better. We the people will keep bringing the work community together and lower the tension in our community by helping us realize the similarities between every single person in our town while also helping understand one's own character. Our particular stories as, as uh, people who have, have a lived experience. So when we bring people together, we focus on you know, what is your life and, you know, what have you seen? How's your lived experience shaped the way you think or include or exclude people? So we're exploring like our own way in which we've developed as human beings and how we can connect with other people with similar values. A long group, we had about a dozen people um, are able to now through the photographs that, that they chose to um, put in the exhibit out in public, now everyone can come and see it and kind of participate in that way. So it's, it's ongoing and it can reach a lot more people. If you want to join We The People and help understand yourself or the community better, check out their website and join in on one of the discussion groups. For Warwick Valley Television, I'm Logan McKay. Voices Through Photos will be going on until February 28th. So stop by the Albert Wisner Public Library to take a look. But if you're in town anyway, you might as well stop for a bite to eat first. There are so many restaurants in Warwick, but which do the residents enjoy the most? We are interviewing people on their favorite lunch spot, lunch spot in Warwick Valley Village. My favorite spot is Wolfie's, and I like Wolfie's because it has uh, old school comfort food. And my favorite lunch spot in Warwick is Cafe a la Mode. I like it because at lunchtime you can still have breakfast if you'd like, or you can have one of their sandwiches for lunch, uh, and they make great milkshakes too. So that's my favorite lunch spot. 
One of my favorite places to be in for Warwick Village is definitely Cafe on Moon. They have really good food. Like they have acai bowls, just different flavors and stuff. A lot of variety and it's just a great place to be. Favorite lunch place in town is Cafe Dolce. Uh, it used to be the bookstore in Warwick for many, many years. And they still have many of the old books which you can uh, borrow or just read while you're there. Upstairs they have a great view of Main Street. They also have a little um, private room in the back where if you want to hang out with a friend and talk and uh, you know hang out with a few people, it's like a little tiny little lounge back there. So it's really cute. It's got a great cafe uh, trendy vibe to it and uh, it's got good coffee too. And my favorite lunch spot here in Warwick is Cafe Dolce. They got fantastic crepes and me and my kids enjoy it. Uh, my favorite lunch spot is Fetch. They have the best bacon Swiss burgers out there. Well, that's a lot of great responses we got today. But personally, my favorite spot to eat is Burger King. Okay? They have good burgers, and me and a bunch of friends usually head, out, head over to Burger King right after, right after school. But my name is John Michael Labosco, and signing off with Warwick Valley TV. No matter what, it's good to know that you can enjoy a good meal almost anywhere in Warwick. For many people, food is what makes the world go round. But you don't want your food to taste like everyone else's. Some people like to add something to the meals that make it stand out compared to all the other cooks. We are outside of Shopway asking local shoppers what their favorite thing to cook is and what their secret ingredient is. Let's see what they say. Okay, and my favorite thing to cook is chicken parmesan. And my secret ingredient is Parmesan cheese in the bread. I mix it with the breadcrumbs when I bread it, and that's my secret ingredient. Favorite thing to cook is my mama's smothered pork chops, and my secret ingredient in that is Gravy Master. And uh, my favorite uh, meal would be to cook, would be pasta vizu, and also with uh, Italian bread, and uh, I guess uh, basically soup, you know, that's just about it. And my favorite thing to cook is some um, pierogies. And special ingredient, you have to have lots of fried onions with it. Thing to cook is what we call grandma chicken. It's my mother-in-law Lenore Sforza's recipe. And it's so easy. And it, what it is, it's chicken thighs cleaned and um, cut into small pieces and you dredge them in mayonnaise and then you dredge them into um, it's panko seasoning, excuse me, panko crumbs and then you place them on a cookie sheet on parchment paper and bake. Favorite thing to cook is chicken parmesan. I don't have a secret ingredient but letting it cook a long time is the key. A lot of good answers. I would say my favorite thing to cook would be probably grilled chicken, and my secret ingredient is chili powder. Anyways, my name is Rowan Astrino from WVTV. Back to you in the studio. Secret ingredients are what make food special. And sometimes you don't want people to know your trick. Even KFC has their recipes locked in a vault. So maybe think about what you can do to make your cooking special. When we come back, we'll be looking at how handling money doesn't have to be stressful. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. Remember the best planned 90 minutes of your life? Or that surprise party for your parents' golden anniversary? You get the golden planning. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. Welcome back to In the Valley. I'm Stephanie Keegan. Banking is often seen as a tedious process. One business, however, wants to make sure the process is more streamlined. I'm here with Matthew Guy of Rhinebeck Bank. 
Banking often gets a bad rap. Sometimes people think it's stale or pushing numbers, which is an oversimplification. So tell us, what does a normal day at the bank look like for you and your team? A normal day at the bank um, is really just helping our community. Uh, I know that there's a lot of rumors that go around how pushing numbers or just simply counting is what a banker would do, and that's really not the case. Uh, I come in every single day. I like to tell my team we're going to have a great day. Our customers are not numbers, they're people. So when you get to help someone with their financial needs and guide them down a road that's going to benefit them in the long run really is the rewarding part of banking, and that's what we strive for with, at Rhinebeck Bank. Your team at Rhinebeck often collaborates with many of the stores and restaurants on Main Street. What has been the best part about that? You know, I grew up in Warwick, so now that I'm working on Main Street in Warwick, it's really nice to see the evolution of what happened and how much the community um, works with each other. It's really nice to see how we all support each other and just build our community to make it a better place. So when most people think about banking, the word community doesn't always follow that. Rhinebeck prides themselves on being a part of the community and sponsoring and being present at local events. What does community banking mean to you? You know, community banking obviously is more of a smaller type of banking. We like to make it more personable. Um, like I said earlier, you're not a number, you're a person to us. So when someone comes through my front door, they're sitting down at my desk, it's really like building rapport with the customer, making sure that all of their financial needs are taken care of. It's not about what my opinion is, it's about what the community needs and giving back to them is really what separates us from the others. Rhinebeck has really immersed themselves in Warwick. Can you talk a little bit about the value that you see in that? I see the value in getting more involved with everything because it's not just showing that we're a financial institution, we're looking for deposits, we're looking to benefit the community. If the community is growing and being more successful and we find a way to help them get there, that's really what helps me sleep at night and I know that's what Rhinebeck Bank looks forward to. Rhinebeck is a great presence on Main Street. How have you seen Main Street evolve? You know, as mentioned before, I grew up in Warwick, so it's really nice watching how everything has grown, whether it's a small business or the, a new owner coming in, a new member to the community. So watching everything evolve and become more positive for the community and benefiting everyone is really, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And you yourself are a graduate of Warwick Valley High School. What led you to banking? So I graduated in 2007, and I actually started working with developmentally disabled individuals. Um, I unfortunately broke my back and I had to have surgery, so after that I wasn't in a more physical atmosphere. So I went back to school and started banking as a teller with Rhinebeck, and I ended up just falling in love with it and grew my way from teller to banker to a branch team leader, and now I'm a branch manager. That's wonderful. You really offer us a unique perspective, having seen Warwick change. What are you hoping to see next in Warwick? You know, I'm really proud to say that I grew up in Warwick and see how everything has gone. What I would like to see next is this new generation continuing to support each other and really just build our community to make it a better place. Yeah. Well, thanks, Matthew, for coming and telling us more about Rhinebeck Bank and what we might be expecting soon. When we come back, we'll be looking at a place that certainly doesn't horse around when it comes to helping people. We'll be right back with more on In the Valley.
Welcome back to In the Valley. I'm Stephanie Keegan. Warwick is almost always growing and changing to better serve the community as a whole. And the new renovations at One Therapy Center reflect that. Let's take a look. Warwick is able to take pride in a lot of things. But with the thriving programs at Winslow Therapeutic, soon it will have something else to be proud of, its accessibility. Winslow, which is approaching its 50th year, is still making changes to better serve the community. One project they are working on is a new building, which will increase the amount of facilities available to adults, people who are struggling with mental health, and more. To the Winslow Therapeutic Coordinators, this is very important and reinforces the belief that Winslow should be a place that is available for everyone. I really found a passion for helping others combine with the horses. And as I grew up, I learned that this is what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And I have learned how to become an instructor here and work with all the different individuals that we come and see on a daily basis. I get to watch our horses impact all our clients and how they change and how they become better people and uh, how they blossom in every way. But what about the people who use the facilities? The riders and team volunteers are just as happy to see one of their favorite places grow. Riding horses has been a big thing of mine since I was little, which definitely helps me a lot with <laughs> calming myself down and all my energy and it helps everyone else and it's amazing to watch everyone improve and grow and get better riders, communicators, the kids who in the beginning have trouble even focusing and then the kids who someday grow up to be amazing, strong people with wonderful personalities. Winslow, what Winslow means to me is, is that like it's special and it really helps me, you know, find some calming sense sometimes. Um, and uh, it's, it's very fun. These renovations aren't the only thing that keeps Winslow active. Its extensive volunteer system helps others keep in touch with the horses and give back to the community and the place that impacted them so much. Winslow's a place that can give everybody a sense of purpose. Uh, for me, I found a career here. I love being around horses. They are very empathic. If you're feeling down, they will come and cuddle. If you're being anxious, they will come and say, eh, not so much today. No cuddles today. You're being anxious. Calm down. They calm you down. They make you a better person. They really do. In just a few months, the fruits of their labors will be sure to pay off for everyone. For WVTV, I'm Astrid Kelly. Winslow's upcoming events include a night on Broadway, the annual Duck Derby, and the 50th anniversary Golden Gala. So come out to support a wonderful cause. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for In the Valley. Next edition, we'll be exploring some more businesses in the middle of March Madness. I'm Stephanie Keegan, and we'll see you next time on In the Valley. Mm -hmm.